بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم مائی نیم از سید علی فراز جعفری اینڈ آئی ایم فرام الیکٹرانکس انجینئرنگ ڈپارٹمنٹ یو ای ٹی ٹیکسلا اینڈ دا آرٹیکل وچ آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو پرزینٹ از این آٹومیٹڈ سسٹم فار دا کلاسیفیکیشن آف برونکیولائٹس اینڈ برونکیکٹس ڈیزیزز یوزنگ لنگ ساؤنڈ انالیسز دیز آر دا ٹیبل آف کنٹینٹ وچ آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو کور فرسٹ آف آل آور موٹیویشن Bronchiolitis is the leading cause of infant hospitalization in the US accounting for 107000 infant hospitalizations each year with a direct cost of 734 million US dollars we can understand the seriousness of bronchiolitis from these two studies as bronchiolitis affect thousands of babies that are mostly under the age of 2 On the other hand, bronchiectasis, which is a chronic lung condition, is the leading cause of pneumonia and tuberculosis. As we already know, the pneumonia and tuberculosis is the leading cause of death in the low and high income countries. And basically, bronchiectasis is the leading cause of developing pneumonia and tuberculosis, with an approximately 522,000 cases diagnosed annually and a direct cost of 734 million US dollars. Various methods are used for the detection of such respiratory diseases such as x-ray scan, CT scan and MRI scan. But these methods are highly complex, time consuming and expensive. So there is a need to design an intelligent system for the precise diagnosis of such respiratory diseases through low cost and non-invasive technique. Introduction Bronchiolitis is a common chest infection that affect babies and children under the age of 2. The infection causes the inflammation and swelling of the bronchi, which is the small air passages of the lung. The infection bronchiolitis is easily treatable at home with the proper protection. Generally 80% of the time it is occur due to a very common known virus which is respiratory syncytial virus, while 20% of the time it can occur due to other viruses also. The symptoms associated with the bronchiolitis are coughing, wheezing, runny nose, difficulty in breathing, feeding and eating. Although the infection bronchiolitis is easily treatable at home with the proper protection, but if in any case the infant is not properly treated, then this infection can cause the serious complications for the children and babies such as bacterial pneumonia and low respiratory tract infection. On the other hand, bronchiectasis is a chronic lung condition in which the bronchial tubes becomes permanently damaged and wounded. This lead to a build up of mucus accumulation and frequent infection into the lungs. The common causes for the bronchiectasis are obstructive lung diseases, allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, chronic aspiration of gastric contents into the lungs, exposure to toxic gases or chemicals, infections inherited disorders immune deficiencies and autoimmune disorders the symptoms for the bronchiectasis are chronic cough frequent infections shortness of breath wheezing chest pain and the complications associated with the bronchiectasis are massive hemoptysis respiratory failure severe pneumonia and tuberculosis literature review In 2019 a researcher team computed the STFT features from the lung sounds and they used it with the CNN model and they achieved the sensitivity of 54%. In 2020 another researcher team also computed the STFT features and they used it with the SVM which is a machine learning model and they achieved the accuracy of 65.5%. In 2021 another researcher team computed the GTCC features from the lung sounds and they used it with the rnn model and they achieved the sensitivity of 78% while in the same year another such a team computed the different time and frequency features from the lung sounds and they used it with the ensemble classifiers while they achieved the accuracy of 96.29% in 2022 another such a team computed the mel spectrogram of the lung sounds and they used it with the tcl model 
uh, which is a machine learning model that they have proposed in their study and they achieved the accuracy of 72.5%. Proposed methodology Our proposed methodology consists of a four stages. Uh, the first stage is data acquisition, second stage is pre-processing, third stage is feature extraction and the last one is classification. Data acquisition In the data acquisition stage, we first basically download the ICBHA 2017 Raspberry Ready database which is International Conference on Biomedical and Health Informatics. The ICBHA dataset contained the 5.5 recordings of 126 subjects. And the recording for each subject is varied from 10 to 90 seconds. While the data is recorded from the 7 different locations of the chest. And for recording purpose, 4 different recording instruments are used. So therefore there are 3 different sampling frequencies for the recorded signals which is 4 kHz, 44.1 kHz and 10 kHz. This is the tabular representation of the ICDHI dataset. In the table, we can see that the number of samples for the healthy bronchiectasis and bronchiolitis signals are 35, 16 and 13, which is a very small number for our experimentation. So for the experimentation, what we did is, we divided each signal into 4 parts. And the sampling frequency for our signal was 44.1 kHz. And after the division of each signal into 4 parts, the number of samples for the healthy bronchiectasis and bronchiolitis signal are increased from 64 to 256. This is the time and frequency domain representation of the raw signals. Pre-processing in the pre-processing stage, we basically use the discrete wavelet transform, which is a signal processing technique, and we use its first approximation coefficient. Basically, the DWT takes the audio signal as an input and decomposes a signal into detailed and approximation coefficients, where the detailed coefficient contains the higher frequency information of the signal, while the approximation coefficient contains the lower frequency information of the signal. The approximation coefficient can be further divided into detailed and approximation coefficients. The DWT algorithm decomposes a signal into detailed and approximation coefficient by using the series of high pass and low pass filters. It is similar as Fourier transform but instead of representing the signal into sinusoidal, it represents the signal in terms of wavelets. This is the time and frequency domain representation of the pre-processed signals. Feature Extraction In the feature extraction stage, we compute the MFCC features from the pre-processed lung sounds, which is the spectral characteristic of the signal. The MFCC algorithm computes the features into five stages. First of all, it basically takes the audio signal as an input and apply the fast Fourier transform on this input audio signal in order to extract the frequency information of the signal. When the FFT is calculated, it applies a range of filter bank by using this equation in order to map the all frequencies into MEL scale. And after that the MEL spectrogram is created. When the MEL spectrogram is created, it applies some non-linear rectifications on the spectrogram such as logarithm. And then finally it applies discrete cosine transform to calculate the final septal coefficient of the input audio signal. These final septal coefficients are the spectral characteristic of the signals. Classification For the classification purpose, we use the fine KNN with the tenfold cross validation. The fine KNN is a supervised learning algorithm, so we need to train it first with the label data. The fine KNN is a variant of K nearest behavior. In the KNN algorithm, it basically computes the Euclidean distance of the new unseen input with their closest data point of training data. While in the case of fine KNN, it computes the weighted average of the closest data points from the new unseen input data uh, instead of just calculating the Euclidean distance. The characteristic for the fine KNN are, it is very simple and interpretable algorithm. That means it can be combined with the other machine learning algorithms such as port vector machine. And the computational complexity for the fine KNN is very less as compared to other machine learning algorithms. 
This is the graphical representation of the different classifiers in which we got the higher accuracies. But among them, we got the most accuracy in KNN model. Basically, these are all the machine learning models that can be used for the classification purpose. This is the graphical representation of the different KNN classifiers in which we got the different accuracies. But among all of them, we got the maximum accuracy on fine KNN classifier, which is 99.2%. This is the confusing matrix for the fine KNN, in which we can see that there are 63 input bronchiectasis signals that are accurately predicted, while only the one bronchiectasis signal is predicted false. Same goes for the healthy signal. Only the one healthy signal is predicted false while all the other 139 signals are accurately predicted. While in the case of bronchiolitis, all the 52 input signals are accurately predicted. And that's how we got the 99.2% accuracy. Conclusion An innovative and non-invasive procedure is proposed for the detection of bronchiolitis and bronchiectasis diseases in this study. Since there is no harmful radiation is used, so this method is not dangerous for the human health. The accuracy obtained was about 99.2%, which is more accurate than the other proposed algorithms. Our proposed method is less complex as compared to other proposed algorithms, and it gives the faster results due to its simplicity.